All right, here's an unusual item. It says underwater television camera. Heavy pipe, probably about 10 pounds. It's got a nice big lens in the end. And the other end is a weird unknown five pin connector. I don't know much about this. Uh, it was probably for some kind of underwater inspection of some kind. It's probably pretty old, maybe 70s. I don't know. But we're going to open it up. So I'm pretty sure that would be these two here, and this just unscrews. So let's give that a try. better one than that. Nope. This one? Ah, there we go. I probably have to take off this nut too. Um, Hmm. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to use this connector anyway. Let's see what's in here. It's still got like oil in it. I hope this isn't full of oil. Oh, hold on, we got something. Uh huh. Well then. I guess it never would have worked then, huh? Hmm. Now look, you can see some transistors down in there. Maybe. Yeah, there's a few. Huh. 
Still stuck. Take these bolts out. Maybe. the camera tube and it looks like this is a layer kind of design <coughs> right, so I guess these end caps would have had to go on last So I guess the whole thing comes out the back. Look at this lens though. Hydro Hydrocinemarine lens. But this is obviously just an off the shelf lens. Well, maybe not. Make this special? Hmm. Hydro Cinemarine. Made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. And here's the connections, which I messed up, but I'll try to undo this. All right, and here's our wires. So the coaxial cables probably are video. Maybe red and black could be power and ground. If they are, the black and the shield on the coaxial cable should connect. And they do. Now this is interesting too. I was wondering why there were five pins on here. So you'd probably have like power, ground, and video, but what are the other two for? So you think about this. This is underwater. You can't go and focus this lens. I mean, this is locked right here. But look at this. There is a gear motor right here that turns this mechanism here, which actually moves the physical tube in and out closer or further from the lens, which would provide the focusing. I don't see any kind of feedback on there. So I'm guessing that two of these wires just connect essentially directly to the motor and then you can either drive it one way or drive it the other way. And that's how you can focus while it's on the end of the uh, tether. And this doesn't go there. I wonder where that came from. Then green and blue go up here to right here and you'll notice that's right on the motor board and in fact you can see the trace go right over you can see the trace go right over to the motor here 
So that is most likely our motor wires. All right, let's see if it does anything. I mean, this is probably either six or 12 volts. I mean, like everything else. So we'll start out at six volts, current limit of 0.2 amps. Let's see if we can make the little motor go. Okay, six volt, clearly not enough. Actually, that little motor seems to be jammed up. So it will draw current, but it doesn't actually turn. So if that's stuck, that's kind of a good reason why this would be uh, put out of service. Okay, I already got out this screw. Got it a little bit. All right. Oh, that's nice. And actually, it still spins. Oh, and there you go. Twelve volts, point two, point two amps. Yeah. 30 RPM, I assume that's on the output. All right, and there's the little planetary gear set that might be frozen. Oh, I think it is pretty stiff. Also, the motor runs through these two resistors here when powered by the, uh, the green and blue wires. So probably this was driven from a higher voltage up top and then dropped down to whatever current this needs. Put some oil down there, see if it loosens it up. Oh, the bottom is actually moving. Yeah, there it goes. And look at that, with the motor off, it actually moves. Although clearly something's wrong. Because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to pull down on like that. I didn't know you could do that. Doesn't that like mess with the focusing? I mean, this is magnetically deflected. Or maybe that was intended. I'm not sure. Oh wait, no, it is working. I think it's just that uh, this piece here is the one that can move. I think that's supposed to be set screwed to the shaft. But if I turn this gear, you can clearly see the tube moving in and out.
that. Ball bearings as well. Oops. Now that motor is back in. So I could try to run it. Look at that, it's moving. And I measured these two resistors. These are each 100 ohms. So with this being 12 volts at 0.2 amps, at least that's what's written on the can, um, they're probably trying to run this at a higher voltage, maybe even as high as 50 volts if the, uh, the current through this is accurate. Which, I mean, makes sense. If this is on the end of some long tether or something, you probably want as high volts as possible. Suppose I'll double check that theory. So let's go to the Variac. Yep. So that's rated about probably 48 volts. I bet this is a 48 volt system. Well, I guess it's time to see if it works. So I have my scope here hooked up to the video output. Oh, right there. And then I actually just tried 12 volts uh, on the red wire, 12 volts on ground. But looking closer, I know I just said this was 48 volts. This is a 15 volt capacitor here. That comes off right off the power. So the red wire goes in here, then through this diode, through resistor, and into this capacitor. So I'm pretty reasonably sure that we're looking somewhere around 15, you know, 12 volts, in that sort of area for operating voltage. But the interesting part is the positive end of the capacitor. Well, that's hooked into the sort of common area, which you'd think is ground. But it might not be. This might be a positive ground system, in which case these two wires are reversed. When I tried this uh, 12 volts on the red wire, it drew absolutely no current. So I think I'll reverse it and see what happens there. Again, if it was reversed, this diode wouldn't conduct, so nothing bad would happen. All right, we'll start off with 5 volts. Oh, look at that. There's some current. Oh wow, look, there's a signal on there. All right, well, it's clearly more than five volts, but uh, that's pretty neat. All right, power brick kept cutting out, so I'm gonna go back to the Variac here. And remember, we're still looking for the filament to light up, so. Oh, there it is, look. Although I'm not seeing a video signal. At least I don't think so. Voltage is a little higher. Oh, oh look, did you see that? Look. That's a video signal. I'm waving my hand over the top like this. That is a video signal. All right, next part. I got out my CRT because capture card just wasn't working. So let's see if we get anything on that.
Very iffy looking screen. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, there's my hand. Oh, hold on. I just saw smoke comes. <clears throat> Uh, hold on, I just saw smoke come out from somewhere. Where's the smoke? There's the, oh, there it is. Smoke coming from somewhere. Well, I guess I better get the thermal camera then. Let's see what we got. Guessing it's probably down here somewhere. Maybe not. Whatever that is, is pretty toasty. Ooh, okay. I think we found our smoke area. Oh, that's hot. It's a very warped image, though. And, oh, you know what? That might be the fault of this transformer, because this does not have very good filtering, so the power output's probably pretty ripply. Maybe I can try, like, an ATX supply or something. The other thing I could do, of course, is just use a 12-volt battery, like it's probably intended to do. It's a very stable image, although I can already tell that, that current is too low, which means the voltage is too low. So I bet we won't get any signal. Yep, nothing. I'm gonna try to bypass that diode. All right, so I bypassed the diode. The whole power supply section is on this piece here, and the power goes in in that red wire and comes out in this red wire. So we got our, our zero volts here and our negative 12 volts there. So let's see what that does. Oh, already more current. And our video signal. Up. Nothing yet. Oh yeah, look at that. We're starting to get something. If I can get the dang thing in sync. Starting to get something. But not quite there yet. Something's telling me the thing to do now is tweak some of these resistors. Just to, oh. Oh, look at that. Hey, it's a picture. All right, I actually tweaked this one a little bit more for a couple more minutes. And now there's an image that works even with the original diode in place. So it could use a little bit more adjustment. It's finally all together. We got it running off the 12 volts here. And I also hooked up the focus motor, but that's right to 12 volts. Couldn't get it to work off 50 volts, but we do have a nice stable picture. So I hooked up these buttons so I can drive it either way. I'm guessing that's why the uh, capacitors and resistors were in there, just so we don't get these lines from the noise of it focusing. And we pointed that way so we can go all the way up close to the end of this vise. My fingers are. All the way out to infinity or the wall in this case.
And of course, being a tube camera, if you do all those fun tube camera-like things, actually, this one does not leave trails nearly as bad as my other Vidicon camera. Something else I didn't notice earlier, this glass on the front that was in front of the lens, it's not glass, but uh, probably acrylic. But look at how thick it is. So I guess that camera case could take some serious pressure. Now something, this is exactly the same size tube as my other Viticon tube. Which makes me wonder if they're compatible, but I don't think I'll be taking it apart today. Well, I guess that's going to do it for the Hydro Products Underwater Television Camera. A tube camera in a tube. Thanks for watching.